Hello and welcome to Orient Today. I'm Joe Johnson and once again I am joined by Kim Urbanowski. Hello, good afternoon, how are you? <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. How's your summer going so far? So far so good. I mean, uh, we haven't done the family trip yet, which is coming up in another couple of days. So Where it's in anticipation of that. We're going to uh, Mackinac City with the family. Ooh. There's I think 14 of us going. All the kids are coming from wherever they live around the country to you know join us all and We'll see how that goes, bunch of adult kids. Do you make it to the mm -hmm. island? Um, we have before, but I don't think we're doing that this year just because we have so many of us. And then oh. there are some of us that, some kids that haven't seen Taquamanon Falls yet. So I think okay. that's what we're gonna do instead. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I haven't been up in that area in decades. Mm -hmm. I need to get back up there. So beautiful, <laughs> so yeah. beautiful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Can't wait to see there. They have a new bridge to Taquamanon. So, you know, the little, I don't know if you know that or not, but they have like a little boat that mm -hmm. takes you from one side to the to the other where you can walk. But uh -huh. now they have a bridge, um, which I'm actually looking forward to because the last time we tried to get in those boats was was nerve wracking. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, yeah, years ago, again decades ago, one of the coolest projects I ever was a part of is I was asked to document the law enforcement torch run for Special Olympics, hmm. and it started in Copper Harbor the northernmost point of the UP wow. and the police officers from Sterling Heights, uh, they ran across the UP, across the uh, bridge, Mackinac Bridge, and all the way back down to Sterling Heights and I had to document the whole thing. <laughs> and so I got to see Michigan up close and personal. That's so it was nice. pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. You didn't run, did you? Did you? No, 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 no. I <laughs> shot video and I'd hang out of the van as we drove <laughs> along the runners, you know, and stuff. But it was so an dead. amazing way to see the state. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, oh gosh, one of the first things I wanted to talk about today was uh, we're kind of in mourning right now. Uh, you may have heard uh, the news broke yesterday that uh, Paul Rubens, also known as Pee Wee Herman, uh, passed away late Sunday night. Uh, there's me and Pee Wee. I got Aww. to uh, meet him in 2017. I was out in LA at the uh, Stan Lee Comic Con and he was there making a personal appearance. So I stood a long line and waited hours for a chance to tell him how much I love him. And we had sort of a funny moment. I walk up to him and he goes, wait, don't tell me, Joseph. And I, <laughs> I was like, yeah, how would you know that? I had no, I, I forgot I had my prices Right name tag on. And so we got a laugh out of that. And then when the photographer went to take the picture, I'm laughing and smiling and he turns to the camera and goes, and makes this face and I was just cracking up. And that was it, you get ushered out and the next person comes in. But uh, it was such a thrill to meet him in person. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was, I was a teenager when uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse was on TV and when yeah. uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure came out and uh, just been a huge fan my whole life. Just that funny comedy that just makes you belly laugh, right? He's yeah. such a goofball, but um, yeah, I, I enjoyed watching watching those movies and you can't think of them. There's certain like iconic moments from those movies and stuff. There's no basement in the Alamo, all those funny <laughs> things, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, just a couple of years ago when I was in LA, I uh, tracked down a house that was used in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. And <clears throat> I pull up, get out with my camera and there's a mom and her son playing on the front lawn. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm like, I hope I'm not bothering you. And she's like, I know, I know the Pee Wee house. And she said, people have been stopping by all day. Right. And I said, do you, do you live here? And she said, my son and I are renting it. And I was like, how cool is that? Right. And I said, has your son seen the movie? She's like, no, not yet. I'm gonna wait till he gets a little older. Yeah. And uh, I said, can you take some pictures of me? And she said, yes, of course. So she got some pictures of me standing in front of the house. Oh, and that's so cool. It was really neat to see that. So. Well, I think Pee Wee was lucky that he met you. <laughs> I don't know if he bragged to his friends about it, but. Uh, he met. <laughs> but it was cool. It was really neat. One of my one of my idols. So, yeah. rest in peace, Paul Rubens, Pee Wee Herman. Mm. Uh, this past weekend was really really busy. Uh, lots of stuff going on. Even though the the weather forced the cancellation of some things, uh, I got up early on Saturday morning to go to the uh, car cruise in downtown Lake Orion, mm. uh, only to find out the classic car guys didn't want to bring their cars out because there was a threat of rain. Yeah. It had rained early that morning. There was a forecast for rain later that afternoon. So 
they pulled the plug on the car show, and I'm sitting there going, where are all the classic cars? Where are they? Uh, so that got canceled. Um, I'm not but I mean, I'm not surprised, because I don't know if you remember, a couple of days ago we had that really bad weather, and there was the hail that was oh, yeah. just massive. So that damaged I think I would be stuff, a little... Yeah. Yeah, yeah classic car too. guys, they don't like bringing their cars out in the weather. So, mm -hmm. <coughs> But one event that uh, did happen, to, despite a little drizzle, was Tommy Stock. Mm -hmm. uh, that kicked off on Friday night and uh, ran through Saturday. And then on Sunday was the fundraiser, fundraiser for the Real Men Wear Pink campaign, the breast right. cancer uh, awareness uh, cause that a lot of people in Lake Orion uh, rally behind. Uh, so Friday and Saturday, there's just numerous concerts at the Fire Bowl. Um, the, this band here is a blues band, and uh, they just had a wide variety of music. On Saturday, they did a lot of uh, Jimmy Buffett kind of mm -hmm. stuff and said they had a really great turnout on Saturday. Um, over by the beach uh, at Tommy's Lake, they had the Tiki Bar set up where people can hang out. Uh, there's more musicians that play near the Tiki Bar. Uh, you get beach access, and uh, just people had a blast. And uh, I was there on Sunday for the the big uh, boobs, tubes, and dudes event, <laughs> and it was it could not have been more beautiful. It was pleasant, mm -hmm. uh, sunny, and everyone just had an absolute blast. And so around three o'clock on Sunday afternoon, everybody makes their way out to the water with their crazy little floats and inflatables and pose <laughs> for a big photo uh, on the water. Uh, they just recently expanded that beach yes, and renovated it. It is beautiful. Yes. And uh, Camp Aguam's just a uh, just an amazing gem that Lake Orion uh, or that Orion Township purchased mm -hmm. a few years ago. And so the organization behind Tommy Stock, the Friends of Camp Aguam, uh, they raise funds to help yeah. maintain that park, and it's just incredible. Yeah. If, if you've never been to to Camp Aguam, just check it out. You it's know, the it's best park. I'm sorry. I <coughs> Hands down, for me, my opinion, I love them all. I have to say that. I love them all. Mm -hmm. But Camp Agawam is my favorite. <laughs> it is my favorite. And that beach, my kids were there on Sunday, and they came back, and they were like, first of all, there was a party. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Second of all, the beach looks great. I mean, yeah. you know, it's been a kind of a hidden gem for a little bit. And... You know, you get a lot of people, I can see people on social media saying, don't spread the word about the expansion of the beach. It's like, it's our little private place. But yeah. honestly, we want as many people to go as possible. Yeah. I, you know, I came out to this community about 30 years ago. And pr probably the first 20 or so years I was out there, I didn't know Camp Agawam existed. Mm. And I know it was a Boy Scouts camp, so I'm not going to go hang out with Boy Scouts. Um, but later I found out when, when the township got it and I first stepped foot on the property, I'm like, I, I didn't know this right. existed. And it's it's beautiful just it driving is. through there and all the cabins and all, everything. It's just yeah. really amazing. Have you seen the chapel and all of I, that stuff I heard too? there is a chapel. I don't know yeah. if I've ever seen it or I've driven right past it without knowing what it is. But yeah. We walked around yeah. there a lot as a family in 2020. It was yeah. our go-to place to get out of the house and all of that. And we discovered things, you know, that that probably you wouldn't discover unless you just had an entire day to walk around there. Yeah. But it's, it's wonderful. Now, they did have a paintball thing there. Is that gone now? It Does is. Does that not yep. exist? Yeah. No. It's not there yeah, anymore. That, I don't know if that was a great fit because I remember when I would go to Camp Aguam, I would hear in the distance, pit, 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 mm. pit, people shooting. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know if that's a good fit. I mean, I'm sure it was fun for the paintballers, but yeah. not people there camping and, and hearing all that ruckus going on. So. Yeah, they gave it a sh I think they were there maybe two or three years. Yeah, yeah. Um, but last year, last year was the first year they weren't there, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. if you haven't been, check out Camp Aguam. They're doing great things there. And... Uh, the Friends of Camp Agawam have some more things planned to improve yes. uh, the Fire Bowl and things like that. So, yeah, yeah really cool event, lots of fun. Uh, also, on uh, Saturday, uh, we had representatives of the Veterans uh, Ministry from Lake Point Community Church in here uh, about a month or so ago promoting their veterans picnic oh, yeah. at Lake Point Community Church in Oxford. And that event, that picnic, took place this past Saturday. So uh, it was really something to see. Uh, it's, they're in their 15th year now. That's how the whole thing started, where there were veterans that were members of the church, and they were trying to figure out what they can do to honor veterans, and they started out with this picnic, which now has become this annual thing. 
Uh, there were some members of the uh, Oak Leaf Model A Club that brought some cars. And unfortunately, the, the picnic was originally planned to be outside, but again, the rain kind of uh, uh, put made people scamper inside. But they did a really nice job setting it all up inside. Uh, volunteers and donations provided the food. Uh, they had volunteers cook the food. They said one guy was responsible for preparing uh, something like 40 pounds of shredded pork. Wow. Um, and the baked beans looked amazing. And, and so uh, it was a really nice event. Uh, there was over 100 veterans and family members there. Uh, and they said an equal number of volunteers who were there. I saw some scouts there who were cleaning up and, and helping out. Uh, there was some music, live music on the stage, and a really, really nice event. That's um, great. I, had, I didn't even, again, something I didn't even know existed until uh, we had uh, some of those guys from the ministry here in the studio, and I'm like, wow, this is a big deal. <laughs> uh, so that was a lot of fun. It was really cool seeing everyone have a good time. Uh, now that the picnic has come and gone, they're going to start preparing for their big dinner. They have a veterans dinner in November, and mm -hmm. I assume it coincides with Veterans Day. But, sure. um, but yeah, they're doing what, they're ca what they can to make veterans feel uh, honored here in this community. I have no problem with that. <laughs> yeah. You know, one thing I noticed, and I, I said it to one of the guys there, I said, a lot of people, when you hear the word veterans, you think of World War II veterans, you know, the, the old timers have been around. But when you when I walked into that event, it's young people yeah. and, and older people, and they're all sharing this moment together. And mm -hmm. there's from the recent wars and recent battles all the way back to World War II. And so it's not just the old timers. You yourself is a vet, is yes. a vet correct? Yeah, yeah I yeah. am. And my husband and... My dad and my brother and a lot of people in my family so yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's that's the thing is it's really nice you know it's nice to hear that because I didn't I didn't even know that that was happening either until I think that there was a flyer at, at the township hall but um, you know it's it's uh, there are certain areas of the country where veterans kind of naturally congregate to right you know the yeah. places on the coast or for at least for the Navy or whatever but um, you, you know so Lee, my husband, is on the, the Veterans Memorial, right? Oh, and yeah. so they're always trying to think about ways to reach out and, and, and get in touch with those younger veterans yeah. and, and get them involved and stuff. So, you know, maybe um, we'll take a, a trip over there and yeah. go to the dinner and stuff and reach out. Yeah, but that's what I hear. The VFW and the American Legion, their, their members are kind of getting up there in age yeah. and they're trying to recruit the younger people to come in and, and be part of that. So hopefully getting them all together and, and sharing that experience will mm -hmm. motivate them to join these organizations. So, yeah, yeah. It's important. So that was pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, also last week was kind of a fun event. Were you at the uh, the chamber golf outing at all? You know what? Uh, I was not. No? <laughs> that was something to see. It was the first time I had actually been there. I've never covered uh, the chamber golf outing because it's so massive yeah um, but they invited us to come out we had multiple ONTV staff people covering different areas of the course uh, I drove around with Steve Wandry on a golf cart trying to cover what I could cover. It was the Marshall, right? He was the Marshall, yeah. It was a good yeah. addition. And they had, you know, crazy things at each hole and different activities yeah. and things that people can uh, compete in and try to win prizes and stuff. So I threw together a little uh, news package. Uh, let's take a look back at the Chamber's uh, annual golf outing. On the morning of Monday, July 24th, 100 golfers showed up at Paint Creek Country Club to take part in the Orient Area Chamber's 8th Annual Golf Outing. Golfers and sponsors started the day off with breakfast in the banquet room, then headed out for 18 holes of golf on a beautiful summer day. Well, first of all, I feel extremely grateful that we had chamber weather, because the weather today was perfect. Paint Creek Country Club did a fabulous job. I am so eternally grateful also we had 204 members and community members participate to make this day as great as we did. That includes our, our golfers, our sponsors, our raffle donors, our swag bag donors, and all of our volunteers and our exceptional golf committee. So I'm really excited. It's my first time here doing this golf outing, so you can imagine my enthusiasm of having all these people come together for a common cause, which was our golf outing today.
To move things along, golfers began the day with a shotgun start and enjoyed scramble rules. Sponsors at each hole provided refreshments and activities like cornhole and even a golf ball cannon. Oh, man, get in the hole. There were many competitions, including a longest drive contest closest to the pin and a hole-in-one contest. Golfers even took a shot at Golfzilla. There was a 50-50 raffle, and participants had a chance to win a wide variety of raffle prizes valued at over $12,000 donated by local businesses and organizations. The sold-out event is the Chamber's largest fundraiser of the year. I have no idea. Wait. Oh, listen, good contact, though, babe. You hit the... F hey, I'm here to tell we you. We found her ball. My ball's in the trees over there. Absolutely. This is the largest fundraiser again with 100 golfers. So we're up uh, 20 golfers from last year. So we're up to 100 golfers this year. We were sold out with sponsorships. So that money raised today kind of helps the chamber operate, helps us continue to support our business community by offering um, beneficial services as well as educational opportunities, uh, access to our local leaders, and basically to help keep the lights on and to keep the chamber up and running. At the end of the day, everyone gathered in the banquet room for dinner and to collect raffle prizes and trophies. Three teams boasted the lowest score of 55, so it came down to a tiebreaker. And it was announced the winning team was made up of Katie Tisdale, Teresa King, Matt Martinek, and Don White. From Paint Creek Country Club, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV News. So, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I did not witness a lot of good golf. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I can tell you right now, there's no good golf going on at the Chamber <laughs> Golf Outing. Luckily, they play that <laughs> scramble where they play the best ball, so that helped out a lot. I will say, though, you may have noticed in the piece, uh, there's that golf cannon, mm -hmm. and I'm not a huge golfer, but if someone could come up with a version of golf where you use a <laughs> golf cannon on every hole, I will take up I'll golfing. Uh, you, I, you land on the green almost every time. I think that the library might want to invest in, in a golf cannon for our More Than Books collection. <laughs> there, there you really go. Fun. There it is. There exactly. it is. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. All right. As you can see, we have a guest joining us on the set. We have James Pugh from the Orion Library here to talk about some of the fun things that are happening over at the library. James, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, what's going on? Well, this week is actually very busy for us. Yeah. This is our final push for our summer reading. Um, for those of you that have been participating in our summer reading program all summer since June, thank you very much. This is the last week, guys. you got to turn in all your stuff. Yeah. Start logging all those books and claim your prizes because you have until Saturday, this Saturday at 11 o'clock, to turn them all in. Otherwise, you don't get them. <laughs> yeah, so I was there for the kickoff, and that's always a lot of fun. Just yeah. a lot of traffic and family and people on the I, grounds of the library. I think we had like over, or at least close to 1,500 people. It was wow. amazing. Wow. Amazing yeah. turnout. Yeah, it's always great to see people at the library having mm -hmm. fun and got the great property and the garden back there and everything where all that activity can take place. And it's hard to believe it's gone. That whole period's gone by so fast that things feel like are it. wrapping up this this <laughs> Saturday. Definitely yeah. doesn't feel like it's been eight weeks, but it definitely has. Yeah. Um, and this Saturday, uh, we actually have a very fun guest coming. Um, his uh, he's a, a Michigan-based magician called Cameron Zvara. We've had him before. He's a lot of fun. He does some um, um, fun magic tricks for the kids. Uh, it's a very entertaining show for all ages. We encourage everybody to come and join us. Um, that's uh, start Saturday at 11 a.m. It goes until 12:30, and then immediately after, that's when we're going to be drawing those prizes uh, for the ra uh, for the big showcase raffle. So if you have your name in those raffles, be there by 12:30 so that you, if your name is called, you can claim your prize. That's awesome. What kind of cool prizes are we talking about? Oh, so many. Um, <laughs> I know that there's a couple of gift cards for adults to like Amazon. There's mm -hmm. a couple of um, fun toys and fun. Um, uh, educational kits for the kids. Uh, if you want to see all the the many different program or many different prizes we have yeah. for our program, uh, you want to check out our big showcase display that is in the lobby of the library. It has all the different toys and all the different prizes that kids can win. And if you want to come in and see them and then put your name in one to draw it, then that's the best way to do it. Yeah, you know it's funny. Uh, a couple of months ago, I had some stuff in the showcase of the you library did. to coincide really cool. with the fan uh, fandom fest over mm -hmm. there. And because kids were used to seeing prizes in the showcase, 
they thought they can win my stuff. They and did. I'm like, they did. No, get what? your grubby little hands <laughs> off my stuff. One kid really wanted to know what the um, the you had the mask or Darth replica Vader, of the mask. Yeah. Stormtrooper. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wanted to know how much that was. And we're like, that's not for sale. That's not for sale. Oh. Yeah, uh, I might let really you check it out. Disclaimer on that. No, <laughs> not for you. I remember years ago when I had some stuff in the showcase, uh, a kid asked if he could check it out like a library book, and I said, no, no. no. <laughs> We do have a new collection called More Than Books Collection, but I don't think we'll be checking out masks or, <laughs> or costumes or anything like that anytime soon. But we do have some really cool stuff. We have uh, a cake pans, like those little special cake pans. We have one that looks like um, Big Bird. So if you want to make a cake for that one birthday where they're really into Big Bird and you don't want to spend the money on it, come uh, get that cake pan shaped like Big Bird and you can use it and bring it back. We have bikes you can check out. We have uh, new uh, VR headsets that you can check out. Wow. Wow. Um, those were provided by our friends. We have a lot new, uh, a lot of new things that we added to the More Than Books collection very recently. So again, get to the library and see what we have. Tools. We have oh, we have tool sets. Yeah. sets we yeah. have um, stud finders. We have radon detectors. We wow. have. A bunch of like random tools that you can come and check out and use and then bring back. I love that that the library scope of, of what it provides for the community just keeps growing and growing and growing. You know, yeah. I mean, it's so, you know, the idea that if I don't need this thing all the time and I don't want to buy it, you know, like w going back to military, like we used to be able to go and rent things or not rent, but we could get <laughs> things like that from yeah. like if we were living on base just to borrow it for a little bit. I mean, it's just really nice that this, like I yeah. said, it keeps growing. I'm it's a renter, a... and so I don't have a lot of tools and stuff in right. my apartment. I have like a hammer, that's about it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> well, now you can come and check out uh, a whole, we have like a 200 piece mechanic set that you can come check out and use when you're fixing something and then bring it back. Yeah, yeah it was interesting because the, the purpose of your podcast that you do right here at ONTV is you talk about all the things that are available at the library beyond books and stuff mm -hmm. and now that scope is expanding uh, yeah to we're gonna have to expand what we talk about on we blame <laughs> our shelves we normally just stick to movies <laughs> books um, video games yeah, things yeah. that you normally find on a shelf yeah, yeah. Um, but now we're gonna have to expand to like maybe tools and maybe <laughs> but I'd have to get an expert <laughs> on that one I'm not I just I know that a hammer puts a nail in the wood that's all, <laughs> that's that's it. That's all I like <laughs> but you can check out a book too or a video on how to use it if that's you want to. That's also true, you that's see. also true. I, I work at a place where I can just get all the information I want right there. <laughs> so wait a minute, the name of the podcast is? We Blame Our Shelves. That's hilarious. <laughs> Where'd that call, who brought that, who? We, uh, so I have a co-host, Dan, um, and we were just kind of toying. We wanted something funny, we wanted something punny, and we came up with that. That's great. I love the name. Awesome. And also coming up this week, you have oh, yeah. some music at the uh, library. Talk about that. So you mentioned our beautiful grounds in the back of the library. We call it our reading garden. It has um, a lot of space for a lot of people to gather. And one of the things we're going to be doing back there this Thursday at 630 is the Motown Eagles concert. Um, they are an Eagles tribute band focused in Detroit, and they have been mm -hmm. around for a while. Um, they're going to play all the, the legendary band's greatest hits. And guess what? This is free for all members of your family. Just show up, enjoy the concert. Um, this is uh, provided by the Friends and the Michigan um, Council for Culture and Art and the Michigan mm. Humanities Council. So we'd like wow. to thank them for sponsoring this concert uh, to, awesome. to be able to provide it for free for everybody who wants to come. Yeah, how many uh, families out there looking for mm. stuff to do? <laughs> you can't beat these free events. As a matter of fact, I was just yeah. at a free event just a week or so ago. We have some video of it of the, the color run uh, that took place at the library. And uh, that's kind of a popular thing that people do. Uh, all oh. the participants <laughs> were encouraged to wear white. And uh, as they uh, ran around a course that was laid out around the library, there were five color stations where volunteers would douse them mm -hmm. with color cornstarch. You could see the clouds <laughs> of cornstarch. It's like a badge and, of uh, honor. Some of those volunteers got really <laughs> aggressive with that cornstarch. Yeah, yeah. But, we uh, love our volunteers. Yeah, and yeah. I, I asked, I'm like, well, how's, how much does it cost to take part? And they're like, oh, it was just a free event, just a fun thing for right. families to come out and do, and uh, it was a lot of fun. 
Yeah, and, and, and that's why I love uh, the, the services and the programs we offer at the library. We do try to keep them free for everybody, and, and we have to thank our, our friends at the library uh, for that because they do provide all the program funding. So the next time you see a um, Friends of the Library book sale, or the next time you're in the library and you see those books that we have for sale all the time in the lobby, feel free to purchase it because that all those proceeds go back to the friends who then give that money to us to pay for the programming that you guys get to enjoy for free all year long. Yeah, so. and you can find some really great deals at the Friends oh, book sale. Yes, I remember I, I went in there one time and I got a stack of books and uh, I go to check out or, or to pay, you know, and I had a stack about this big and they're like, that'll be $6. Right. Like, $6? <laughs> I said, do you accept donations? And they said, yeah, sure. So I donated some more money because I felt like I was stealing. It's a really great deal. <laughs> the biggest, I think, event we have is on the, on the Saturday, the last day of the book sale. It's a $5 bag day. We give you a big <laughs> paper grocery bag and you pay $5 and you get to fill it up with books. And that's when a lot of people are like, no, 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 that's that's too too generous. And they like to get <laughs> donations. But p please feel free to, to donate to our friends of the library because again if that goes towards them then that comes right back to us we can give you all those awesome programs yeah and they accept all different kinds of media too i, I yep. was just there a week or so ago i donated a box of dvds because mm -hmm. uh, i kind of replaced my dvds with blu-rays and things like that <laughs> so the dvds that i've replaced i'll box up and take to the library and donate so so yeah swing by the library and donate any books or media that uh you're trying to get rid of some clutter and it goes to a great cause thank you yeah. I'll go now, buy it, too. <laughs> donate it and I'll buy it. Yeah, and don't uh, wait till the last day. The good stuff will be there at the first few days. That's so true. Get out that's there true. Get the good stuff. <laughs> and, oh, and here's another one. I'm just going to plug this because I love Friends of the Library, and I volunteer as often as I can for the book, book sales, but they do need help with those. They need help they setting those up. Mm -hmm. And I think one's coming in September. Yep. And so, like, if anyone has a free moment and you love books... You love the library. I mean, give them give them a couple hours of your day, even just once during that week, would be really helpful to fill those holes. So that's my plug. Oh no, me. thank you for that. Because yes, you, you you don't have to give financially to to benefit the friends. You can give yeah. some of your time and, and volunteer, and we'd be more and they would be more yeah. than happy to, to to see you there. Yeah. Oh well. Now, even though the summer reading program is coming in, to an end this weekend. There are year-round reading incentives. Do you want to talk about we that? We do. Okay, so we have a very fun program for um, adults, which is called 50 Books in 52 Weeks. Mm. That does sound daunting. Um, but you don't need to read all 50 books in order to win prizes, much like the Summer Reading Prize, if, you, if you've been doing it. Um, as you read, you gain more badges, you gain um, more milestones, and you get a prize for each one of those, so you can gain prizes throughout the year. You don't need to get all 50. Um, for our teens, the, we have um, two. For the middle schoolers, we have uh, 75 books by high school. So that's you can read 75 books um, before from between 6th and 8th grade. Um, get prizes along the way as you do that. And then for high schoolers, we have 100 books by graduation. Um, and that is the same thing. You read books, you earn prizes. Um, the fun thing here is the books that you get to read, to, you have to read for school count towards this program. Oh, okay. So, Even better. So you get incentive to kind of do homework because, oh, I'll get a prize if I finish this book. Um, and then for our elementary age kids, we have 500 books by fifth. And this is to help, like, you know, they're, they're learning their reading, they're, they're getting comfortable with it, they're building their skills. So this is just an incentive to keep that up all through, like, your kindergarten, first, second, third, because, again, you earn prizes for different milestones that you reach. Um, and then finally, why not start at the youngest age and uh, do a thousand books before kindergarten? <laughs> <Wow. laughs> now that does sound like a lot, but I always tell parents, you can read the same book over and over and over and over again, and that'll count each time. So yeah. <laughs> if oh, they yeah. really love Good Night Moon and it's the 500th time you've read it, you'll get a prize. And those are pretty easy reading. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah. 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 What's on your nightstand right now? What are you uh, What are you reading? Right now, I'm finishing up the Expanse series, uh, the novels. Um, I love the TV show, and the book series is fantastic. And I'm in the final book, and I'm just really kind of like just stretching it out because I don't want it to end. <laughs> yeah, I've experienced that where you finish a book and you're kind of depressed because you're no longer in that <laughs> right. world. Especially a series. If you end the series, you're like, oh, my, yeah. my favorite character. So I get to start yeah, over yeah. again and reread the whole thing, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Anything you're uh, reading right now? I am debating on entering into The Goldfinch. I see. Good luck. Okay. <laughs> that's So I have a Goodreads account and I keep all the books that I want to read, and I put all the ones that I buy from the book sale on 
on the shelf in there. But it's one that my kids keep saying, you should read this one. And I'm like, why? And they said, because the movie was really good. And I was like, that's not the same thing. <laughs> but it's a daunting book. It's, a, it's a faux book size book. But it's good. It Maybe that's good. a fall read. Maybe. When you can't go outside because the weather's a little yes. cold. Just curl up with a blanket, yes. a nice cup of tea. Yeah. That, yeah. That Maybe makes I'll sense. save it for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, I finally doing? tackled uh, a book that's been on my to-do list, to -do list for a long time. Have you heard of the actor Errol Flynn, oh, yeah. Swashbuckler, yeah. Robin Hood? Uh, he wrote an autobiography later in life called My Wicked, Wicked Ways. And uh, <laughs> I fun. found like a first edition book on eBay and uh, just started cracking that open and reading that. And that's a lot mm. of fun. And uh, starts out with, well, it actually starts out with him as an adult experiencing some financial hardships, which is so shocking. Wow. Uh, but then he's like, before I go any further, let's go back to the beginning. And he talks about his youth and uh, childhood and everything. And he was rambunctious. Oh, yeah, <laughs> well. And uh, so that's been really fascinating because I'm I'm just such a big fan of you like, love the history those kind of, of Hollywood yeah. and, yeah. you know, the Golden Age and stuff like that. So it's, it's it, fun finally starting I that. mean, you had at least... Uh, 13 classic movie memorabilia in that display oh, sure. you had at the library. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's my whole apartment is decorated and <laughs> that kind of stuff. So, yeah. So that's what I'll be reading uh, over the next few weeks. Just get home late from work, uh, lay down in bed, read a little bit before I fall asleep. So that's the did plan. You, did you enter in any of the, these books over no, the to get prizes? No, not yet. Oh, no, not I'm yet? not competing oh, okay. for prizes. <laughs> no, no. Um, all right, so if anyone has any questions about all these programs and fun activities going on at the library, how do they get more information? Well, you can always visit uh, orionlibrary.org. You can follow us on Facebook, um, on Instagram. Uh, we do have a Threads. Oh, yeah, I, just, I just started a thread. Yeah, I'll, I'll um, and uh, we actually have a really fun TikTok. So if you if you're on TikTok and you want to see some really fun uh, videos that we've been doing, check us out there. And then, as always, you can call us um, and ask the librarian, and we'll be more than happy to help you find whatever you're looking for. Yeah, I don't know if we touched on it. If you want to touch briefly on the makerspace. Oh yeah, the makerspace. Oh, yeah. We actually expended some stuff in the makerspace. So everybody knows we have a laser etcher. Everybody knows we have a 3D printer. Yeah. Um, now we have an embroidery machine. So you can make some really nice embroidered um, t-shirts. Cool. Uh, we have a, a bigger Cricut machine so you can vinyl print some bigger uh, areas. Um, we have a digital uh, converter. So if you have like old videotapes that you want to put onto DVD, we hmm. can do that. Uh, some old, um, if you want to do the same thing with cassettes, we can digitize that audio. The makerspace is always expanding and we're always looking to, to uh, add more equipment to it. So feel free to stop by and see what we add. Whenever. Yeah. Whenever <laughs> I go in there, there's that aroma of the burnt wood. <laughs> yeah. From, from the Glowforge. <laughs> yes. That thing is so cool. So, yeah, lots of fun, exciting things happening at the library. That's one thing I love about our library is it's so progressive and forward thinking, and yes. it's always looking outside of just checking out books. There's so much to see and do there. It's really great to see. Thank you. So thanks for coming out. Thanks for having me. What's going on? And I can't wait to do this again. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you when you come in to do your next podcast. Yeah, we blame our shows. We blame can our be shows. found on SoundCloud. And so good. Where do you share uh, the podcast? You, share you can it. find it on our website. Okay. Uh, we have we have a link right there. But follow uh, ONTV Local Voice. They have a lot of great podcasts on there too. Not just ours, but a lot of local. Uh, community members come in and make some really interesting podcasts. So I would recommend looking any of those up too. Yeah, but check theirs out. I, I listen to it and I laugh out loud sometimes, especially like during your introductions are always funny. So yeah, so check it out. And we are now going to go over to, let me turn the page here. Uh, we got uh, Killer Flamingos who recently performed at Wildwood and uh, talk about great venues here in uh, Orient Township. Uh, check out the Killer Flamingos recent performance uh, as part of the uh, summer concert series at Wildwood. And there's a giant concrete slab here, and there's a giant dance floor. So we're gonna see everyone come down and dance with us tonight, okay? Oh, don't you think I look back? Just keep your eyes on me. I see her rolling back. She said, shut up and dance with me. This one is my destiny. She said, Of 
That song reminds me of, I, I was in LA in like 2015, driving up Pacific Coast Highway in my rental car, windows rolled down, it's just beautiful, and the song comes on on the radio, I love that song, so I'm behind the wheel just singing out loud, shut up, bad dad, <laughs> and this Jeep pulls up alongside of me, and I turn and look at him, and he's singing along with me, blonde guy with dreadlocks, and he's like, yeah! And we're both singing <laughs> alongside each other on the Pacific Coast Highway. That was hilarious. Oh, that's so great. That's funny. cool. I'm like, is he making fun of me? But he was no. having fun. He was enjoying the song, too. Brotherhood. So, yeah. Brotherhood on the Pacific Coast Highway. Look at that. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> that's one of my favorite places on the planet. Oh, I bet it's beautiful. So, yeah. Um, you know, we recently did a brand new show here at ON TV. We're going to uh, make it a series. We've done one episode so far. And it's something we've been wanting to do for a long, long time. And we finally have someone who's taking charge and, and, and making it happen. Uh, it's called Lake Orion Memories. And uh, we're bringing uh, people in. John Ranville is the producer of it. Uh, mm -hmm. He's bringing in longtime Lake Orion residents, uh, inviting them into the studio just to share their memories of growing up and living here in Lake Orion. And the first episode of, we've gotten a great response on it and uh the stories that they shared are great uh some of the people that sat in on the first panel was uh harry stephen longtime resident of lake orion and former village council member and mm -hmm. uh as a matter of fact just recently there was a village council meeting airing live and i looked up and there he was sitting in the audience there um he had some amazing stories uh reva beady mm -hmm. who used to go by reva campbell she hosts a, uh, a tour uh, on the yeah. lake yeah. and points out all the cool little facts 
about uh, the lake and her family owned the marina for the long time, Lake Orion Marine uh, over on, on M24 and the Darling Cottage, which was right over there. And according to Reva, that was the first cottage built on Lake Orion. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, her family sold the property and one of the first things they did was demolish the cottage. Yeah. And I believe they're gonna demolish the marina and uh, put some, what, condos or something over there? Uh, I think what's so. slated for development? Yeah. I don't know. It's, I think it's mixed use, but it's mostly that the condos. Yeah. The, you know, multifamily stuff. So. Yeah. And yeah. so um, and so there were some other panelists. John Randall sat in, shared his stories. Uh, the show's hosted by Terry Stiles, who uh, works over at our sister studio in Oxford, Oxford mm. Community Television. And it was just a great, great program, lots of great stories. And yeah. fortunately, John's going to be out of town for the next month or so. But when he comes back, he's going to set up the next episode. Um, and uh, we want people to come in and, and share their yes. stories. How long have you been in this community? Um, so I, I moved to this area, it was like mid 90s. And then for a brief time, I lived in Rochester Hills for like four years, but then I came back. So I've been here, I've been here since, like solidly since 2000. Yeah. Um, you know, my first address here was in at Orion Cove, and then oh yeah, yeah, that's one of those little apartments there. I think I was there for about four years, um, and you know I lived on Heights Road. I lived you know in Lake Forest, and now I'm a Keatington girl, and I you know so <laughs> I don't know. I feel like when you make it to Keatington, you kind of made it in Orion. <laughs> or that's what I've been told. But yeah, so I've been here since about 2000, solidly. Yeah, yeah I came out. Uh, I think in. 93 I think it was so I'm coming up on 30 years uh, here in Lake Orion and I've seen a lot of things come and go mm -hmm. uh, one memory that comes to mind is our former ON TV studio uh, was over by the Taco Bell where Broadway dance yep. is now I remember that. and so the first eight years or so that I was in this community I worked out of that building and right across the street was uh, Burl's Barbershop and uh, whenever I needed a haircut, which isn't so often anymore, but um, I used to run across the street and it was like something out of Mayberry. You had little old Burl <laughs> with his glasses and like a white lab coat on, and uh, he would he had the old barber chairs and it was where Malash is. He had, his building yeah. was right in the middle of the Malash dealership. And I would go in and there'd be a couple of old timers sitting there waiting for their haircuts. And I would sit down and we would talk about sports right. and politics and wait our turn. What's and happening in the town. Yeah. And that seems like an eternity ago. Yeah. And I have to assume Burl retired or passed away and Malash ended up demolishing the barbershop just to free up that space. But uh, yeah, those are some of my earliest memories moving out here to Lake Orion. And shopping over at uh, I think it was called LNS where CBS uh, is right now there was a grocery store there yes. and uh, I used to get groceries there yeah yeah so my one of my earliest memories is getting locked in um, the greenhouse at Jacobson's <laughs> <laughs> on a Sunday when they closed at like 5 30 and I'm thinking it would be a six o'clock close time yeah my um, my daughter and I were at the very back of the greenhouse and they, they locked the doors on either side and we came out at like, I thought it was gonna close at six, like 5.30 is a weird time to close, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. They locked us in and, and it was a debacle trying to get, you know, <laughs> I'm like, they're gonna call the police on me for breaking in or whatever. And then it was like trying to get the kid, the like little three year old over the fence and don't move cause that's a busy road. And I don't know, it was the craziest thing, but that's, so every time I go into to Jacobson's, I laugh that I got stuck in there. I should have just stayed. And also, I didn't get the plant, so whatever. <laughs> you know, the first year that I came out here, I shot video of what was the last daytime Christmas parade. They used oh, really? to do the Christmas parade on a Saturday or something in the middle of the day. Mm. And the one that I shot was not very well attended. And hmm. they thought, we have to do something. We have to make a change or it's going to go Bump away. It up. So the very next year, I believe it was the Christmas of 94, I want to say, mm. 
Um, they went with the nighttime lighted Christmas parade, and it was huge. And it's the rest huge. Is history. Yeah. 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 And the so the biggest the, nighttime lighted Christmas parade. Yeah. I think on the planet. <laughs> yeah. Right. Is what I. And so it was really amazing to say that I saw the last daytime parade. That's Since then, they've been yeah. doing it at night, and it's become just a huge thing. So I think it's really important, and I, I appreciate the the that program because you know we hear a lot. You know, I'm on the planning commission, and a lot of people come up and they'll start telling their stories about. I remember who used to live at that piece of property, and this you know they'll talk about family ties and things like that. Um, it's super important, I think, for people to tell those stories, and it's even better to have them on film so that yeah. we can watch it. So. Yeah, so here's a little uh, clip from our, our recent uh, inaugural episode of Lake Orion Memories. start with you. You say you came in directly from birth. You came into Lake Orion. Mm -hmm. Did you stay? Did you leave? Uh, I've only left a couple times and that was, uh, uh, I was born here in 1949. I left in uh, 1969 when Uncle Sam says, uh, I got gotcha. you. And uh, yeah. I didn't want to go in the Army so I enlisted. Uh, I enlisted in the Navy and uh, spent almost three years overseas and uh, came back and and uh, got my old job back. I uh, uh, was employed by the Village Lake Orion Public Works in 67 and spent 37 years as uh, a worker, a DPW director, and then another 16 years, I believe it was 16 years on the Village Council. So I had about 53 years on the payroll with the Village. <laughs> Serving and the community, community really. Yeah. And yeah. I was very active with uh, different uh, organizations, uh, the Boat Club Life Member, mm -hmm. Lions Club Life Member, went through all the chairs. Mm -hmm. uh, just finished up a six-year tour with the commander of the Legion in, in Orion. And then uh, I've been dreaming about this for five years. I think I talked to Joe, he's in the other room, uh, five, six years ago about my dream about doing this and uh, uh, documenting the history. The history. Uh, this is the oral history of Lake Orion, right? Orion, yeah. So um, prior to us going on the air, we talked about changes that have happened and my perspective is I've been out of Lake Orion for a while, certainly not very far in, in Oxford, but I've seen a lot of changes and you say it hasn't changed that much. And Reva, uh, you know the history because of your boat tours that you do. Mm -hmm. What kind of changes have you seen throughout the years, even from maybe the 40s to now, which would encompass this group? Have you seen a lot of changes? Or do you, uh, historically, do you know of a lot of changes that are <coughs> major? So I would say just development. Um, more street lights, more houses on the lake. Um, mm. Perfect example is this photo. It was taken about in the 40s. Oh, uh, there's gosh. still Just two. The oh, oh, I'm sorry. There's still two bridges going to Park Island. Oh my gosh! And yeah. <laughs> it's mostly farmland around the lake. Um, a lot of peach tree orchards and things yeah, like that right. around, um, but almost no houses. <laughs> so <sighs> we went from like 200 homes to ni over 930 homes on the lake. <sighs> Um, so oh, development yes. would be huge. I mean, it's gone right. in little spurts here and there, but um, uh, just as a kid, I mean, I've been here since 83. I remember there being like one or two stoplights in town. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel like now we need more. <laughs> yeah. So, right. um, but uh, what else would I say? Um, lake activities. Um, you know, we used to have parades and things like that. Um, back when I was a kid, we don't really do, well, we do our lighted boat parade uh, for Dragon mm -hmm. on the Lake Festival, but. Um, and there used to be races on the lake on mm -hmm. Sunday afternoons, yeah. the sailboat, sailboat races, sailboat. do they yeah. still have those? 
No, no. I in it's fact I can't tell you the last time I saw a sailboat or uh -oh. someone water ski or uh, you know yeah. the sports have totally changed. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. now people pull tubes behind a boat and that's a sport. So many boats on the lake nowadays it's oh, yeah. very dangerous to yeah. do any of those <laughs> activities. Uh, right. I agree with Reba the, the building up of the summer cottages to mm -hmm. full-time year-round houses has been tremendous. Mm -hmm. uh, population on the lake is triple. Yeah. So yeah, that was a lot of fun and we're busy planning our next show and we have people reaching out to us going, I want to be on the next mm. show. So if you know of someone uh, who's been around for a while here in the community and they want to come in and share their stories, just have them reach out to us and uh, we'll put you in contact with John. Ranville, who's uh, coordinating all the guests, but I'm really looking forward to this becoming a regular thing. So. I hope he stays really busy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, something else, oh, I can't believe we're talking about this already, but the uh, there's conversations about the football season and fantasy football and uh, all that stuff. And of course, the high school football season is right around the corner. It's something I really look forward to. I'm usually the guy running <laughs> up and down the sidelines with a camera on my shoulders. And uh, it's, I'm getting to the age where it's kicking my butt. But uh, <laughs> I like being out there. I yeah. like being among the action. And just recently, uh, Anthony Terramina, who uh, hosts the program with his friends uh, between Terraminas, uh, he invited uh, Coach Chris Bell to come in and recap last year and look ahead to this upcoming season and their schedule. So let's take a look at a clip from the Lake Orion uh, football preview show. Good evening, Lake Orion. Welcome to Lake Orion football preview show on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony Tiramina co-host of Between Terraminas and also host of History Now. Both of the shows are on Orion Neighborhood Television, ONTV. And I'm here with my guest, Coach Bell. Coach, how are you doing? Good, Anthony. Good, 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 good. Um, I wanted to recap, um, I wanted to recap last season before we talk about this season. Um, last season we were four and five, but we were the last team to make the playoffs in Division One. Had a very tough schedule with a very young team, um, we had we had some really really good games. Um, we Utica Eisenhower were a game that could have went either way. Um, Oxford, we won that game. Uh, we got we were able to get the double O trophy back in Lake Orion. Uh, Stony Creek had a very tough road game against a very good team. Played Adams, played West Bloomfield, played Clarkston, played Celine, all tough and. Um, are able to get our wins in the um, crossover games against Oak Park and North Farmington. Um, I want to recap, let's talk about um, last year's team, um, if you can. What was it like with last year's team? Uh, it was a great group of kids. Um, you know, it was, it took us a while to get going. You know, I, I, look, up, I look back to game one, and uh, in game one, I really felt like, uh, our defense really played well. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like offensively, you know, we we uh, we struggled a little bit offensively, but uh, you know, we we had the lead mm -hmm. uh, late in the third quarter, put together a nice drive, and uh, you know, we we got near the goal line and uh, we fumbled the football down on the goal line, and had we scored there at the end of the third, it would have put us up two scores. Mm -hmm. And they were really, and Eisenhower was really struggling. You know, we, we were we were playing pretty fast, and our tempo was good, and you could tell that, that we we had them on the ropes. But uh, you know, we, we fumbled the ball, and the ball actually just took a a nice hop for them, and the linebacker caught it on the run and ran it back 95 yards, changed the game, and then we got the ball back in our first series. Uh, we threw a bad interception, and they ran that back. So in a matter of Literally, in a matter of a minute, we went from possibly putting the game away to holy cow, we're now down two scores. And, uh, you know, and we just, we, we, we weren't really ready. Uh, you know, we, it was tough for us to play from behind. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it, so that, 
you know, fortunately the kids rebounded the next week and we came out the next week and, and we beat the, you know, we thought at the time it was going to be a good Oak Park team. They're always talented, they're well coached, mm -hmm. and, you know, we really put a nice game together and we went on a little bit of a run. Um, but still, you know, I don't know if yet if we really believe that we could compete with the better teams in our league. Mm -hmm. So it took us a while, you know, to learn that, you know, if we do things the right way that we can compete. And, uh, you know, we, and we finally, you know, I thought made that turn where we knew we could be a good football team. Um, we did play a tough schedule. We did get in the playoffs, mm -hmm. which, you know, I told the kids, I said, you know, we, we finished four and five. But, you know, I, I really felt like we were a top 32 team in our division. We deserve to be in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, most importantly, it was great for our young guys to get that playoff experience, understand what that atmosphere is like. And a lot of times, once you're there, you know, the kids want to go back. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they want to be part of it. They, they were excited about it. Uh, you know, we lost in a high-scoring game to Rochester Adams. Yep. Um, you know, again, Adams had a phenomenal player that we struggled to shut down, but you know, I, I but we, you know, we managed to score a lot of points as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, a lot. So, I think last year was was a lot of growth. Um, you know, I you know, I had been, you know, it was my first year back after a, you know, five year absence, and uh, you know, I think the kids had to get used to me again. They had mm -hmm. to get used to some of the new terminology and some of the things that we brought back, and and uh, so it's kind of a learning curve for everybody, but. The one thing about last year, uh, great kids, they came to work every day, positive attitudes, you know, zero off the field issues, uh, you know, really loved coaching those guys. I think that's 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 the greatest thing is every day was fun with them, and I really uh, appreciated those guys last year. So great job, Anthony. He really does his research and does a really great job uh, hosting this program. And so I'm looking forward to the football season. You're looking forward to the marching band season? Yeah, I am. <laughs> I mean, I don't have kids in the program right now, but I do have an incoming eighth grader, so we're trying to encourage the Gotcha. Yeah, and into they do it. such a great job. They're 15. always competitive on a statewide yes. uh, level. Yeah. Always. <laughs> uh, we only have a few minutes left. We want to make sure we get in our quick hit segment produced by our intern, Bethany, and get out your calendar and write some of these dates down. Here's quick hits. Hi, and welcome back to ONTV Quick Hit. On Thursday, the Orion Library will be hosting Bubbles and Splash from 11 o'clock to noon. This event will take place in the Reading Garden and includes lots of outdoor bubble fun and water. All ages are welcome. For more information, visit orionlibrary.org. The LO Live Concert Series continues this week with John Tyler Wiley and his Virginia Choir. The concert will take place on Wednesday beginning at 6.30 in downtown Lake Orion at Children's Park. Bring your lawn chairs and the whole family for an evening of music and fun. Don't miss the 20th annual Big Rig Gig this Friday at Friendship Park from 5 to 8 p.m. Come experience a close-up look of dozens of trucks, tractors, diggers, and more. This evening is an unforgettable experience for the whole family. The Orion Library will be having its summer reading finale on Saturday beginning at 11 o'clock. The event will be in the Reading Garden and will include a magic show from Cameron Zvara to celebrate the summer of reading. The summer reading prize raffle will begin promptly after the show. Do reptiles make good pets? Learn more about them on Saturday at the Wint Nature Center. This program will include a discussion of the pros and cons of reptile keeping to help you decide if an exotic pet is right for you. The program runs from 10 a.m. to noon. Pre-registration is required by calling 248-858-0916. Now for on to this week's weather. Looks like Wednesday and Thursday will both be partly cloudy. Wednesday with a high of 82 and a low of 66. And Thursday with a high of 85 and a low of 63. Same thing throughout the weekend. Partly cloudy skies covering from Friday to through Sunday. Friday, the temperature will be a high of 78 and a low of 57. Saturday, a high of 77 and a low of 59. And Sunday, a high of 80 and a low of 63. That's it for this week's ONTV Quick Hit. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.
So there you go, lots of stuff coming up. Uh, we wanted to make sure we mentioned that on August 19th, right here at the Orient Center is the outdoor community garage sale, and inside the building is the uh, Toy and Comic Expo, which I look forward to every year. I used to take part in it until I sold just about everything oh. I brought, so I, I need to replenish my inventory. There so. we go. All right, well, that sort of wraps up Orion today. That went by in the blink of an eye. It did. It was really quick today. Yeah. Like. And we'll be back in a couple of weeks with a brand new episode. Thanks for watching. Kim, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. And we'll see you next time.